Welcome to an important time in your life. Thank you for sharing it with Free Music Empire Attention Undivided. Um, I, uh, yeah, I'm the Jason Stratham of hip hop blogging. I am Dan O here to, to lead you. And with me is essentially the bullet tooth Tony of Canadian hip hop. We're talking to Lord Juco himself. Yes, uh, yes. Lord Juco the Relentless. Thank you for being here. Thank uh, you for having me, man. That was a very good analogy. I, I respect it highly. I, I will take the bullet to Sony of Toronto gladly. That's <laughs> good shit. I was, yeah, there was some question about, like, I remember a while back where it was like, who's your favorite Canadian MC of all time? Dad Bod Rap Bod was asking it. Very smart people. Um, and I was just like, I don't think it's cool to say it. It's Juco for me. Like, <laughs> you know, like, I don't know. Like, I think you're supposed to say, you're supposed to say, like, Cardinal Official or Cadence Weapon or, like, somebody that has that kind of, you know, that pomp and circumstance. But you are much more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Style little, thank you. Person. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. That's, that's, uh, that's, thank you. That's flattering. That's flattering. Cause yeah, you are supposed to say like 10 other names, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I get it too. Trust me. We, you know, I didn't know I was ignorant to a lot of it, to be honest. A lot of like hip hop taught me about Canadian MCs and Toronto mm -hmm. artists and stuff. Like I didn't know about them growing up in the city at all. Like, I heard of one, two joints for sure. Yeah. But, like I didn't know who the hell they were. I didn't know where they were from. Like I had no idea. You know what I mean? I had to be learned. So that's all that's and that's always a different experience when you don't have a scene teaching you how to be in the scene and you're just creating your own shit like um we oh somebody who was on uh what is the, the ep with the slashing head that you have it was excellent what was the title of this thing um that would be i think shadows too yes so the uh, flash is clayton who was who killed it on that show. Yeah, absolutely. Um, he's a beat. Love Flash is like and he's from like Northern California, but he was always an East Coast guy. He always lived yeah, in nah, he's he's solid, solid. And he, he bodied that shit. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So he's it's kind of, I got a chance to talk to him and be like, what was that like kind of being a fish out of the scene, out of the water of the scene? But you didn't even really know that what you were doing wasn't what other people were doing. You didn't even know what other people were doing, right? No. No, that's a good way of putting it. No, I was so tunnel vision on what I was doing. I had no idea what anyone was doing. I learned about people through music, like through putting out music. And you know what I mean? Like, I had yep. no idea. I've always just been doing what I saw in my head. That's awesome. Yeah, no, that's, and it was, I just, I just put that out there as a tweet. I was like, the rep, because I love this album. I Raised Right, I think this is your best album. And I, it, it means something specific to me. It, it has a specific uh, place in my heart for a specific reason. But I was talking about um, the first time that you do something just the way you wanted to do it. And it works as an artist. You got to hold that shit, that feeling. Because people oh, will try and tell you you're crazy or you're not doing the right thing or you need to do it this way. You got to remember, I killed that shit, and they can't take that. Even it, even sometimes when you don't kill it, you got to just trust what you got. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you got to just yep. stick to your guns. Like, you got to just know. You got to know. You know what I mean? Because people are not always going to embrace and understand and accept what you're doing. But if it's if you're if you're doing it right, the time will tell. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's just like I, I, I in the beginning, I'll be honest, you get caught up on that, like, uh, like, it's important to you. So you feel like it should be important. Then you realize like, it's it's not the right time. It's not who it, like, you know what I mean? So yep. Yep. I, yeah, I, I respect that. Yes, absolutely. What was uh, so but I was going to ask you. But what, what do you think? What do you see raised right as being about? Uh, me about about um time and me and myself and learning 
about me through time because the album took four years to make or almost yep. five so, something like that like like it, i was collecting beats and making songs like some songs were done back then some songs were done the last year like it, it was a very widespread time period to make an album but there was no pressure to make it it was just let me make what i want to make and I'm glad everyone trusted me to do so because I feel like it is a good body of work. I feel like oh. you can just put it on yeah. and listen to it. I don't think you need to skip songs or pick songs. You know what I mean? No, and, and you you are one of those relentless artists who is always putting out, you know, four song, five song, you know, full project. You're always releasing single songs, whatever. Um, and, then, and so this this was really... But this is different because this really does feel like a fully themed conceptual project in a way. And I want to give you my pitch on what Raised Right is about, and you can correct me, okay? Yeah. I think Raised Right is a beautiful album about how to grow as a person when you're an asshole. <laughs> uh, you know what? that's my reality so absolutely you it's basically what i said just re re reworded you know what i mean well i had a hard time with that but mm -hmm. um yeah absolutely yes i'm I, I, i'm a bit of an asshole so you know yeah it, it, and the movies are always about the stories you you see are always about the kind of shy kid right who's mm -hmm. like the shy kid coming into his confidence and overcoming the asshole. But there's no like, there's no movie like I'm an asshole, but I'm trying to get better and I'm trying to figure out the best version of me in this public space. Um, and Raised Right is totally that shit to me. Um, and it's been, it's glorious because I am an asshole as well. So it's, yeah, we speak the same language. So it, and there's part of me that's always thought that being nice is what they tell you to do so they can take advantage of you. Yeah, yeah it's true. It, it, there's a lot of truth to it, to be honest. It's hard to argue that. Especially when you, when you start parenting. Yep. And you start dealing with situations where you're like. Yep. Oh, yes. Yeah. So like. I have two, I have two young children and I don't have patience for adults. You know what I mean? Yes. yes. When, 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 when adults act like children, I don't have patience for that shit. I always will have something to say because shut the fuck up. You right. know what I mean? I always tell like, if a kid's crying and people are like, yo, shut that kid up. When you shut the fuck up and eat your food and fucking don't, don't bother that family. Cause you have no fucking clue. Sit down in your phone. You know what I mean? Like, that real shit, shit drives me crazy. That that's shit drives shit. me. Crazy. That but, that's the one thing. Becoming a parent, you realize, like, Jesus Christ, this is a different life. <laughs> this shit is crazy. And you realize also that, like, sometimes people are teaching your kid to be docile, and teaching your kid to just follow shit. And you're like, we've got our own set of of shit to how we carry ourselves, and exactly. that, that's going to come first, and then. Exactly. You can, you can, you know, you can help us. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. And and that starts with teaching the kids that like, it's okay to say no. It's okay to disagree. It's yep. okay. Despite how people react, you're allowed to say no. Like you yep. can make your own decision, you know? So yeah, no, yeah. that's, that's real shit. So it was, so the other thing I wanted to get, because you've had some incredible Guy Ritchie themed projects, right? HHSS. Loved HHSS, the, the uh, lock, stock, two smoking barrels, kind of held that together. And this is very snatch. Um, and yeah. it so as a Guy Ritchie person, right? Guy yeah. Ritchie is very slept on all time, directly. Yeah, you probably. Know? Yeah. He's not mentioned a lot, but he kind of changed the speed at which movies kind of moved in moments, those weird pauses, you know, the guy, you know, takes the pills, long, weird pause, then we cut somewhere else. 
He was speeding it up, slowing it down, really kind of visionary shit. Mm -hmm. Uh, So the question is, is Snatch better than Lockstock or vice versa? What is the... Yes, Snatch is better than Lockstock. And Guy Ritchie has said himself, Snack is Lockstock with a budget, really. Because that's what it was. Because a lot of, like, Bullet Tooth Tony dragged over. Um, a lot of the themes dragged over. Like, it was it was a similar crime situation. Like, it was just way better put together than Lockstock. Lockstock was really good for what it is. It's a great film. It, I, it's fantastic. I love it. But Snatch is better. Tenfold. Bricktop is better in that. In, oh. Instead of just voicing. He voiced Lockstock, right? He did the narrating. Oh, Yes, yep, yep. Yeah, in this one, he's he's fucking Bricktop. He's the most entertaining character in the whole film. You got yeah. um, uh, Frankie Four Fingers, obviously, mm-hmm. Bullet Tooth Tony's in it. You got, but it's, it's, a, it's just a great film. The dialogue is incredible. It's hilarious. Um, like everything about it, like how they're trying to rob the bank and they can't open the door. And then the guy comes and opens the door. He's like, what do you guys, like, yeah. they're trying to like, Push a pole door or something like that. Holy fuck! Like that. That movie's incredible. That's one I mean, of the greatest movies ever made. Greatest and, films, whatever. And one of my arguments, like to keep a simple argument for Snatch, is that can you think of anyone else who could have gotten a star as big as Brad Pitt to do that role? Straight up, and and not do it properly, but just be Brad Pitt and like get away with it. I think you're going to speak in a language no one's going to understand the whole movie and you're going to be like dirty and live in a mobile home and like, and Brad Pitt's like, I'm in. Like, this is great. And like, yeah. it's just magical. You never see some shit like that. You never no, see. And he fucking nailed it. He oh, nailed it. The, they're one of the funniest characters in the movie. And I'm not, not to spoil the movie if anyone watches it, but like right. they're the ones who hold it down in the movie. So Oh, you know what I, mean? Like, I mean, it's they're so funny when the guy's hooking up the trailer and they're all watching him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, and the shout out the background pikeys who are amazing to look at. Incredible. A bunch, and you're just looking at the mullet dude, and you, it's just great. It's yeah. just a movie that's so full. Yeah, you know? it's a better, it's just a better movie, man. All the, all across the board. It had the budget, it had the money. Benicio oh. del Toro was perfect. Like everyone was great. Cousin Avi was great. Everyone was great in that movie. Yep. I, w- I was gonna tell you, like, because you so I, I wrote a whole thing uh, recently about how I think that the ornate uh New York hardcore sound, the post-Griselda sound, kind of is is in a little bit of danger and doesn't know it is because the fan base has started celebrating like everybody's project, right? And being like, you know, on Twitter, there's always somebody being like, this guy's actually the best rapper in the world. And there's a lot of them that sound the same. And I was going to say to you, it, this album production wise, it's like one of those online games where they're like, build your fantasy team. You've got your $5 guy here, your $3 guy here. You've got $15, put together your best team, and you just put together a better production team than any than like any of the albums in this category. Um, it's yep. holy shit. From Nicholas Craven, the artist, the historian. The, I mean, I, I just keep checking the track listing every time I listen to it. Yeah. But it's still cohesive, right? It still oh. sounds, it still sounds like it, it doesn't sound like a mixed match of of, of production not at all like, it sounds like a whole a wholehearted body of work like and that, i i think i do that better than anyone but who the fuck am i right like i i gotta show and prove and i'm ready to do that so that's all yep. i'm gonna say that's why, that's why the finn album is coming november 5th it's called yep. deep it's i think 13 songs Ooh. uh who's, who's on it i'll give you the exclusive right now who's on let's it? do it um, a son's on it. Yep. Danielson's on it. Um, Smooth is on it. Ooh. Um, Pro Dillinger is on it. 
Um, I think that's it. That's awesome. But yeah, you got like, there's some people that are like sneaky brilliant. Like NCL Tim is a great example. I love yeah, NCL Tim. Absolutely. absolutely. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, Highway 308 is on Ooh. the album. The artist from Toronto. Sorry, I oh, just got to. Nah, awesome. I have to say that. This came but yeah. But you've also got people you've worked with before. Uh, the standouts, right? With the yep. you know, white wall. Yep. Yep. Yeah, the background you got there. One of the best album covers in recent history. Um, just people remark on it all the time. It's like beautiful. It's beautiful. Uh, so and and it's great album. And the standouts have my favorite beat on here. Like um, amongst all these heavy hitters, um, it's Zumo and just all these people that are just absolute killers. Uh, for me, it's Gorgeous George. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. I keep coming back to it. It's so, talk to me about putting together, was this, so you said you were putting this together as a project from the get-go. This wasn't just kind of a bunch of songs that came together? No, this this was a four-year process. Like, I this was just sing, having songs done, having things here and there, and like, just me working over the years, having things in my collection. You know what I mean? I have a lot of stuff I hold on to. Like people send me beats. I'll be like, oh, I want these four and I'll sit on it for like a long time. And I know people are like, what the fuck is going on? But shit happens. Like I do record to shit. It's just, I sit on it. I hold it. I wait until I have what I want. You know what I mean? So yeah. yeah. Over, over the course of four years. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, it was just a collection of things that I really liked. And, and and I themed it accordingly and I brought it all together cohesively. It was like 21 songs and I had to cut whatever, however many made the cut to 21 mm -hmm. to just drop it. And like, it had to come out, you know what I mean? Cause I hit, a, yeah. I hit a point where I was like, this album has to come out before I can move forward. So that's what had to happen. Beautiful. I mean, to, so you work on it for four years. Yeah. You're using so much stuff you know new stuff old stuff you're getting it together how how does the sequencing work how do you how do you decide what goes where what were you what were you looking for when you were putting it together um my theme i, I had my theme in mind and uh i applied it and and i made it that theme like the same way hhss comes out like it's right. just, it's so easy to mix a movie with the music because it's so, it's perfect. It's fucking match made in heaven, you know what I mean? So yep. once you have that, it's really, it's really easy to go from there because like I said, it was 21 songs and I had to cut music. So you know what's, what, what works and what doesn't. Yeah. And you, there's so you, it, lots of people cut movie scenes into their music. Mm -hmm. Um, but it doesn't always connect to what they're talking about. Um, and That's you, true. you have a great way of making sure that, that it's felt, right? That like uh, you're gorgeous George to a pike, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, or, you know, they come for everybody, even Bullet Tooth Tony or whatever. Like you're just, yeah. You, you have a way of making the, making the song, it's clear that what you were doing came out of that scene, movie scene, mm -hmm. and grew from it uh, organically. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, awesome. yeah, just a fan of the movie, you know what I mean? And like, I don't want to do it a disservice by like quoting it and, and being whack, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I want, I want it to, you know, come correct, you know? So, correct. Yeah. It's, but yeah, no, it's it's so. Uh, I'm, I'm 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 very much into it, in, and yeah, the historian, holy shit, yeah, Boris the Blade. I mean, it, there's there's so many big, big Grimes. Yep, yeah, it's. I mean, it was <laughs> the uh, so the thing about it. I was I was going to talk to you, but 
Nicholas Craven gives you some heat on here. Um, and I'm a, I'm a big fan. What makes, what makes Nicholas Craven beats so luxurious? And I think a lot of these beats feel luxurious. They feel yeah, they, expansive. Yeah, they do. They yeah. do. And they are. <laughs> uh, yeah. They're supposed to feel that way. I, I don't know, man. They have that sound. But, like, I feel like um, you got to find it at the same time. Like, I don't think, I don't think, like, if a producer sends me and someone else 10 beats, right? Yep. Someone might think like nine of them are bangers and they don't like one. And I like the one they didn't like and I can make the better song. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm not saying that I'm the better artist. I'm just saying that's how it goes sometimes. Like the beat, the beat just has to talk to you and you got to let it, you know? Yeah. I, yeah. I feel like that's something that my generation had to learn, I'm, you know, uh, child of the eighties. And, and there was a time when people just were like, who cares about the beats? This guy is spitting, you know? Um, and yeah, you had to, over time, be like, oh, this guy's got a better ear. And that means something, right? Like, part of your job is to have a good ear. Yeah. And if, yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. Not, yeah, because, you know, honestly, I'm a fan first. So I grew up a, a fan of hip hop and I like hip hop. And I was never biased, like, Oh, this guy is the only guy. Like, the, you know what I mean? Like, right, right. Yeah, you know, like, oh, like, fuck. Like, I grew up on Styles P. Like, he's he's the goat. But it's not. I'm not putting pressure on people about it. Like, you know what I mean? Right, right. You're not out there yelling at people. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like, I'll listen to whoever. Let's. I'll listen. Put on anyone. I'll listen. Let's. I'll give yep. you know, I'll listen. So, yeah. Yeah. No, it's it. Or I were. I think when I really fell into the Styles P zone, it was those mixtapes. Yeah, he was going like, crazy. He was, he was going, going nuts, and he was just like, it just felt like when you put the beat on and he went nuts on it, he just somehow made an amazing song every time. <laughs> like, yeah, like yo, he he did a, a New York State of Mind freestyle. Yep, and I like it more than Nas's shit, to be honest, because like. The shit is just crazy. And I know that's yeah. disrespectful. And I know people are like, oh, but yeah, like it's just crazy. It's just crazy. He, he just had a he, he had a different because like obviously Jadakiss was incredibly clever and it still is, and it's just great at dropping kind of these pearls of wisdom to live your life by and shit. Mm -hmm. Um mm -hmm. but styles always felt like the uncle who had been through some shit <laughs> and he was like he was like I'm, I'm trying to be cool but please don't fuck with me. you know yeah, like, yeah. and he was going he was he's great so i'm i'm with you on styles the uh yeah we're talking about i mean the, we talked about this in flattered i'm an asshole i'm glad to be like you you know a, a refrain how has being an asshole helped you over the years? Uh, it it, um, it avoids a whole path. You know what I mean? When you go this way, it's usually the end of a conversation for most people. So, you know what I mean? So you basically I mean, avoid, you avoid the relationships that wouldn't have worked anyway kind of thing? Yes. Yeah. You're not wasting your time. You know yeah. what I mean? Because yeah. people have a sense of humor and like, that's a different thing. So I have a sense of humor. You're not going to hurt my feelings. Like, I'll tell you right now, I'll laugh. Like, you, we're, you know what I mean? Like, I can joke about shit. I could take a joke. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I'm pretty normal on that shit. But just being right. an asshole, it just deads everything. It's, so we don't have to do this. You know what I mean? But I'm a nice guy. At the end of the day, I am. I give everyone their, their chance. But yes still an asshole and i realize and i have to accept it because that's how you move forward so yes i am an asshole right no it, it, it is like to me that is the first step on like getting better as a yeah. person being an asshole yeah. Yeah. people who don't get better are people who have found ways to convince themselves they're not assholes because they get dirty or you know, whatever you do yeah and you're like well you're still an asshole you know, like it's 
You got to work with yourself. Um, yeah, that's that's awesome. Yeah, no, it's it's been, it, it, and it's in a creative space. It's important because there's just a lot of grift going on. Mm. You know, yeah. there's a lot of people working hustles on people. Um, so, I imagine that that has come in handy putting up the barrier. Ooh, so many parts. Look backs. I was thinking about look backs. Um, y'all got look, money. Look books. Look books. Sorry, y'all got money without taste. Yeah, I I feel like that's important. That yeah, in popular culture, uh, money makes the ugliest shit cool. Yeah, but she can still look goofy. It's really annoying to see people drool over corny, rich stuff. I agree. So it, it, it's about collective taste, right? And like, how do you upgrade the collective taste so that they don't get like hypnotized by Donald Trump just because he's rich, you know? Um, no, that's just the hierarchy of, of, of us as men and our egos. Yeah, like The guy with the most money is the biggest guy. So that's how women look at men. Because like, yeah. well, this guy has got the most money, so he's the guy. And like, you know, we lay that platform for them so we can't be mad at them, you know? Mm. Yeah, that's, that's a thing. We just have to detach flyness from money to a certain extent, give it a little room to breathe. Yeah, be like, yeah, it's it's interesting out there. The uh, man, uh, I mean, just there's so many lines on this one that stuck with me and was like life shit. You know, uh, you can't learn from the youth if you never let them talk. Was that Loser's Luxury? Do I have that title right? I think so. Yep. Yeah, that one's right. Yeah, <laughs> yep. yeah that one's right. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, man. That's going on a lot. Who, who are some young voices in hip-hop you would like most old heads to hear? Young voices in hip-hop. Um, damn, Raz Fresco. Oh, wow. shit. That's a good one. He's younger than me. That he's a solid dude. He's a great rapper. Yep. Non for the city. Um, young dude. I don't, bro. I don't know the age of a lot of people to be honest. That's like, fair. I really don't. Um, but that's that's. I'll, I'll I'll say that name. That's a young dude from the city. In terms of production, um, four limbs out the UK. Good one. I don't know his age though, to be honest. So, but I'm assuming he's younger than me. Yeah, that's a dude to look out for. Um, off the top of my head, that's all I can think of right now. Cause yep, the only people I can assume their age. You know what I'm saying? I think that's, but I think it is like I've met more or and talked to and talked about more younger cats that are accepted by underground old heads than I had before. I think things have gotten a little better in that regard. Absolutely, but yeah. I think I think the situation is go, is understood now. Yep. Is, is, no one's intruding. No one's overstepping. No one's disrespecting. You know what I mean? Well, I'm I can't speak for no one else. To right. Be honest. But like I come, I'm coming with peace. So, you know what I mean? I respect hip hop. I, like I I I I took the time to look into it and learn about it and and understand it. You know what I mean? So. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I and love I think, this shit. I think one of the reasons that hip hop survives and grows is because there's kind of a rule. If you're good, you're good. That's, you know, uh, in the, in the, ba in the most basic way. Absolutely. That's just how it is. Right. If you come in and you kill it, it's your day. You did it, you know? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter if you're old or young or whatever, it, you know, that's supposed to be the standard. So mm -hmm. I think, you're right. The people started understanding it was an issue, and there was a there's a course correction for 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 some of it. So mm -hmm. that's 
more than you can say for a lot of other genres, certainly. It's true. That's true. But what was, so the other thing I have to talk to you about is Flyers versus Leafs. And I was just, I, I, I listened to that song a lot. Um, and what was it like getting that Vinny Paz verse? Like getting a trophy. You know what I mean? In the, in the simplest way. A shout out to him for, for being solid. Because, yeah, that shit, that shit meant the world to me. I'm not going to lie. He brought it on that song. That shit was mm-hmm. hard. Um, he's, and he's, he did that on Hus Kingpin's album. He's that I, I'm, I've been very interested in like, I feel like some people who acknowledge how important he has been stopped listening to him a few years ago and were like, we're done here. But he is not done. He is high level. His album is really good. The album he released this year. Um, Mm -hmm. I think he's a little bit underrated. I think he's just been going so long that like people people are are like maybe he still has people holding on, but I don't know if he has new fans like that. I don't know. I don't know his situation. I can't speak on him to be honest. That's cool. Um, but no, just, yeah, he, he definitely doesn't get the praise he deserves, in my opinion. So I agree yeah. with you on that. No, you and you're probably right that like this is you you're around for so long they take you for granted. That's just what absolutely. happens. Yeah, right? absolutely. So and absolutely. especially when you don't have these dips, right? Oops, sorry. So sometimes a dip can help you, right? Because you you have a dip and then you have a comeback. And I feel like Paz has just been solid the whole time. Yeah, definitely. So it's, yeah. But yeah, I, I can't imagine how that must have been um, to, to get. And what and who did that? Let me get credit. That was, yeah, who, who did that beat? Was that honorable? What was it from? The beat for... Uh, Leafs oh, first Leafs. Yep. and Hobgoblin. Hobgoblin, that's right. We will start with an H. So, yeah, that was an awesome beat with a lot of swing to it, a lot of movement. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Great beat. He sent it to me for the Death of the Darby stuff, and um, we didn't use it for that, so I used it for myself, and yeah, shit was crazy. Beautiful hockey metaphor. Uh, very cool to have that uh, going in this. I just enjoyed it. The uh, so the other thing that was really the gem here that you and you say this I think on multiple songs, um, talking about listening more and talking less. Mm-hmm. Um. When did that transition happen where you were, you started listening more and talking less and yielding the benefits? Um, I want to say in the past like four years. Awesome. Yeah. 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 Learning and, 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 and growing. That's just, you know, it's important, man. It's important to understand and listen and, and 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 hear the other, you know, just it's important to listen to people. Yep. That's all people need at the end of the day, you know. So yep. yeah. No, perspectives, I mean, getting other people's perspectives can help a lot. Um yeah. Understand. not even that though. Not even that, just being able to have someone you can speak to about real shit. <laughs> about how you feel about the you know, that's very very important in life mm. and a lot of times people have someone they can talk to but are not someone that people talk to you know what i mean so yeah that's all i'm saying that's awesome and how so how 
How did listening more and talking less change things for you in a positive way? Like, what was, what have you yielded as benefits from that? What, like, what, how has it changed the way your life was? Patience, my patience with everything, my patience for my children, my patience for day to day life. You, you learn, you learn to be more patient and just accepting of certain things, you know? Right. You got to give people a chance. You got to, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. Le and learning. Learning more than anything, to be honest. But right. Just in a, simple, in a simple way. Patience gives situations room to breathe. It's really, it's really good. It's really important. So, and that's, I imagine, has that changed your recording process in any way? Your creative process? Yes, actually, it has. It's it's slowed it down a little bit, to be honest. But it makes it a little more um, productive in a way. Which kind of doesn't make sense, but it does. Like when 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 I'm, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. No, how I think to explain that is it, further. Is it like jabs versus power punches? Right, where you're like, if if you're, you can always throw a jab, but you got you load up for a power punch you know it's it's that that that's a good way of putting it yes 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 i didn't understand that at first but yes that's a good way of putting it yeah, yeah. and you got to know how to mix it up i guess you know throw a few jabs and follow you got to have both you got to have both so that's kind of the the formula you know what i mean mm -hmm. yeah. yeah no that's understandable the um, i think i yeah, I think if you as a prolific artist, like I said, relentless, but raised right is very masterfully curated. Um, how when well, you were working on this for four years, you were still kind of feeding people with other music. How did you balance the two, right? Of like, I'm putting this EP out here, but I'm still working on this project. Like, how did you? balance doing both of those at once i didn't at all it was a horrible terrible time and that's why it took four years because i couldn't balance the both you know what i mean yeah, yeah, yeah. I, had to keep, I had to keep working so like that was the priority was to be busy but i had this thing on the back on the back burner just slowly building you know what i mean but it built to what it is so Hopefully everyone understands that. You know what I mean? Yep. No, and I th I, whether it's producers or rappers, everybody tells me, like, I was working on a few projects and so nothing was getting done. Mm -hmm. And I had to stop and focus on this one. And once I did, it was much better. Um, that is, like, universally what everybody says. Um that it's just really hard to split yourself into multiple places in that sense. It really is. It's hard to have um, a, a proper creative input when you're stretched thin. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you do it to yourself. You do it to yourself. But yeah, it definitely takes a toll. Totally. Um, yeah. yeah. The other, the other line that I, that I think about a lot, and it goes back to what you were saying about like Styles P and how he's your goat, but you don't need him to be everybody's goat. Uh, you have a line here where you say, you know, I fuck with Russ, but I don't listen to his music. You know, I fuck with Vince, but I don't listen to his music. <laughs> it was so, I, honestly, it was kind of a relief. I was like, yes, like, you don't have to hate these people. Like it's it, yeah, no, no, no. honestly, I think I think there's there's another young dude who we should praise is is Vince Staples. Vince Staples is a genius, very smart dude. I have nothing but good things to say about him, but I do not like I don't listen to his music. Like I just I'm not feeling it. It's not for me. But God yeah. bless him. You know what I mean? The dude is a, a great dude, like from what I've seen. Yep. You know. And I could say the same about Russ. Russ seems like a pretty smart guy. Like he, he, yep. he's got it figured out. He's making his money. I don't understand the backlash, 
but I don't listen to his music, so I I wouldn't know. You know what I mean? But no, there's like a. I think extreme takes get the most interest from people, so they're like, so it's you know something comes out and they're like the album's trash and he's trash and you're trash and like everybody's trash, you know. Yeah. Um, but in real life, that's just not how human beings usually function, right? Like it's like. Yeah. Usually you're like, eh, it's not my thing. It's not, that's yeah. not where I, where I come from. Enjoy. Yeah. 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 And there's no, like, you got to separate art and artist. You know what I mean? Like, I don't hate the person for making something I don't like. Like, you, that's just cool, man. We can coexist. You know what I mean? Right. It's not bothering me. Yeah. People need to get over that shit. But that's only on the internet, like you said. People don't do that in person. No, no, they do not. Everybody in person has a pretty reasonable understanding of what's going on. Absolutely. Absolutely. For the most part. Yep. No, it, it, it was. Yeah. And I still wrestle with this too. I it was a while ago when I was like, I, I was, you know, you have to do the end of your lists and you have to kind of tell people what you like. And there are these big tentpole albums that are critically appreciated that are important and musically important, but a lot of them are kind of either dense or, stark in a way that I like I'll listen to it once or whatever but I'm not listening to it a lot I'm like I've listened to that guy's album like a hundred times you know and this guy's album three times how am I going to put this at three and that at 15 or whatever that's weird you know yeah, um, yeah. so I was just like you know what if I if I don't really listen to it that much I'm not going to wave the flag that much for it you know um it's got to have replay value. That's it. For me? It's got to have replay value. It's got to be able to survive the test of time. At least one joint. You know what I mean? Yep. Yep. I don't want it to be one of those, like, fancy movies that you, you would keep in your DVD shelf to impress people and never watch. Yeah. yeah. I'm not looking for that shit. So, where did you... Man, the other one... Uh... The Juco feature that is one of my favorites is uh, Midnight Suns. Oh, Zilla, Zilla Rock. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's a crazy joint. Oh, man. Because it was such a great Billy Woods verse. It really was. He, he bodied that shit. Unbelievable. Yeah. And you came in at the end and just like poured bleach on that whole shit it was fucking great yeah. honest living crooked killing uh it, yeah talk up to so and that was like a chong wizard records connection right that was yes yes yeah yes that was uh yeah that was too chong but zilla's cool that shit that shit was crazy that joint came out crazy oh love that track i mean Tell me about Chong, Chong Wizard, who seems to really have everything together in terms of how to package stuff and how to put it out. Mm. Um, the stuff just looks beautiful. No, I agree. I agree. Um, it definitely came out properly, that's for sure. The artwork speaks for itself. So yep. that, that, that's always very important. And uh, I think the layout and everything definitely helped a lot because it, it looks beautiful. Yeah, was White Walls? Is that the, was that the first thing you put out through Chong, or was that the? Uh, no, it was on um, the first Infinity Stone. Oh right. I think oh. I think it was the first one. Yeah, I think it was. On I the love the Infinity one. Stone EP. Yeah, Chong, was, Chong Chong knew what was good early, but yeah, yep. yeah I was on the first Infinity Stone, and then. Um, I got on another one. I don't remember the other one. I don't remember what number it is. I think you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were in a bunch of them. Yeah. Another one. yeah. I'm on another one with Fly Anakin, I believe. And um, I think that's that's just about it. And then, yeah, the Zilla thing came through Chong. Yeah, and that, that's where that came from. So you mm -hmm. already know. Good shit. Yeah. No, it's... it's. Are you, are you full-time hip-hop artist at this point or are you splitting job and the music 
Oh man, the music is like an hour a week. <laughs> I, I no, it's not. It's not that. But yeah, no, music is definitely not paying the bills. That's for sure. Yeah, I hear you. A lot of people are in that position. Yeah, it's not. It's not. Pri- like I hate to say, it's not priority, but it's definitely not. Because mm-hmm. you know, life. You know, when you have kids. Oh yeah, when you have kids, that's it. Like there's no. Yeah. yeah. And everybody kind of gets it. No, people stop bothering you to go places, you know? They're like, oh, you <laughs> yeah, yeah. uh, kids, you never come in. Right, totally. They they just assume they don't, they don't yeah. even say but they yeah. so but is it more comfortable to make art from that position to be able to just kind of do whatever you want uh, on the side, or is it yeah. Would it be better to have the full on career? Of it? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I gotta experience both to answer that. So, yeah. After I experience both, we'll revisit this conversation, and I'll, I'll give you. I'll give you a proper answer. Because that's I fair. Can't, I can't answer that correctly. You know. That's fair. Yeah. So, how about this quick question? Your top five JUCO project. My top five, my project. Do they have to be in order? No, no. Well, yeah, you no. Know, you don't have to have the numerical ranking down right now. Yeah. All right. So keep ninety six imperial. Good one. Um. Fuck. Jade. Oh, Jade is so good. I'm into Jade. Fuck. H H S S. And Ray's right. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's my five. Yup. That's my five. Good shit, man. So what was it? so? You said new albums coming in November. Now did I say I didn't say White Walls. Nah, yo. Oh fuck. See, there's too many, bro. I'm gonna take out Ray's right. White Walls. Oh, White I'm Walls. Bugging. Excellent. Excellent. I'm, I'm bugging. That's cool. The uh so what was so is it you said new albums coming in November? Yeah, November 5th. Nice. November 5th. Lordjuco.com. Uh, no, it's gonna be goldenerramusic.com. Um, well, we'll 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 get that all sorted and situated, and everyone will know where to get it. Beautiful, that's yeah. awesome. Is it gonna be, um, like a big rollout? Is there gonna be merch or anything? Is it gonna be any of that no, stuff? We're in the process of all that stuff, actually. So yeah, and there is kind of rollout kind of already started. So beautiful, man. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, trying to get something going, you know. Yeah. No. How have you felt about the response to Raised Right? Have you had an increased response, or is it? Absolutely, absolutely. It's 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 been great. I I very happy, very humbled. Um, it's the best I've ever done in terms of numbers by myself. You know what I mean? Right. In terms of streaming, vinyl, everything. Like I'm doing everything myself. I don't. I'm not. You know. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it's I'm happy. I'm happy. I can't complain. I'm not losing money. I'll tell you that, you know. That's key. You know, and it, it's it's you know, everybody's the, the problem for everybody is that once you have an audience, then you have to reach people who are not your audience, you know, and make them your audience. You know, um, I didn't know about Lord Juco a few years ago, uh, but. When I did, I was grabbing all kinds of, you know, historical juco and, and processing it. And it's great. So I hope more people will go through that process um, and really understand. Because if you listen to 96 Imperial and li- then listen to Raised Right, you can definitely feel the growth on that. Absolutely. With yeah, you, you maybe should, Tiffany you joints know. in between little Tiffany joints. Um, another beautiful cover. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm very, I'm very, uh, very big on the cover being properly done. You know what I mean? Do you have any favorite covers of other people's albums this year that you loved? This year? Fuck. Yep. Um, fuck. I'm trying to think now. We'll drop this year. Um, yeah, honestly, off the top of my head. I like uh, Hitler eight the the side A. Yeah. Not the Celine one, the the, the mask holes. Yeah. Yeah. Some fly shit. Um, um Yeah, I can't off the top of my head right now. I'm too, I'm too stoned to honestly give you. It's a, okay. I got a chance to uh I got a chance to talk to PQ, who's a great cover artist from Philly. Uh, and we had a whole episode on cover art uh and we got a chance to talk about like ryan puma and the mm-hmm. great stuff that that he's done with grilled cheese party and there's just a lot of really good cover art ncl tim another one with great cover art yep yeah consistently yeah he's one let's see there you go consistent no he's great so i appreciate you uh taking your time and yeah thank you very much Keep me in mind, November 5th, uh, you know, I am awaiting more Juco and the progression of Lord Juco. Thank you, bro. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. I'm, 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 I'm humbled. I appreciate it. You know, you know, it's all love. No Do you have a Definitely. copy of Raised Right? Um, I have a digital. I have a digital copy of Raised Right. Absolutely. All right. We'll get you a physical. We'll, we'll, we'll talk after this. Beautiful. I want the Juco hat. I want the Juco. I want the Juco hat is beautiful. So, yeah. I got you. Definitely, man. Thank you. Yeah. Hit me up whenever you need. So, yeah. And for everybody else, subscribe. Uh, stay with us. More crazy, uh, beautiful guests coming. Um, people who have really put their heart into their projects. So, thank you for checking it out.